perfect so far. From the blockhouse, the crew is reporting as they monitor the various activities over the final phase. Now T minus 30 seconds and counting. Siphon building, the tension building as these seconds tick away. Everyone on edge. The astronauts. T minus 20 seconds and counting. Coming up on it now. In a moment, you'll hear the countdown. Again. 15. 5 seconds. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have ignition. And we have a liftoff. Dirty orange flame against the sky. There she goes. The half million pounds of jet thrust. There she goes. High, high, ever higher. Toward orbit and high over the mark, Atlantic. 50 second mark. Not a Gemini control. Let's get a status report. Gemini control. What's it look like? You've heard the rocket roar. And Dave Scott gives us his first report. The cabin pressure at 5.7. Everything perfect. Everything looks good. The distance uh, now from the Cape about four miles. Altitude. 24 miles. Minute and a half, we'll get the first booster engine cut off. It all continues to go well, and it looks beautiful here. What a liftoff that was. What a One trip. minute, 30 seconds into the flight. The flight director's just been advised. The thrust looks good. That's another good, good bit of news all the way around. This has been a perfect, perfect Mark, news. one minute plus 40 seconds. And the crew is advised they look good. We'll get that booster engine cut off in less than a minute now. Less than a minute. That'll be that good. digital command system update has been received in the spacecraft. And Scott has depressed the little button on the right side, which indicates to the ground that it was received. This is Paul Haney talking to you from Houston Space Center. Giving Flight you Dynamics you. says we're go for staging. We're two. It's brought to you in living color on NBC. Good morning, this is today. The date is September 9, and it's a Friday. We had hoped, as you know, who, if you're tuning in right now and just awakening on the world, you know that we had intended to start from Cape Kennedy and bring you coverage of Gemini 11 mission. However, a leak in the fuel system has caused some drastic alterations of those plans. Frank Blair will have the details on this in a moment when he brings you the news. Barbara Walters here this morning. We have guests and features for you. Hope you can stay with us throughout for everything. Uh, time now is about a minute after seven. If you want to set your clock or get up, we have all the news at hand now in the person of Frank Blair. Frank? Thanks, Hugh, and good morning, everyone. Gemini 11 has been scrubbed. Postponement came early today after a leak was discovered in the fuel system of the Titan II booster rocket. The story from NBC News correspondent Jay Barbary at Cape Kennedy. A small leak in the Titan II rocket's fuel system halted astronauts Charles Conrad and Richard Gordon's scheduled liftoff for their Gemini 11 flight this morning. The leak was discovered just three hours before the Gemini 11 crew was to be awakened to begin preparations for the three-day mission. The astronauts were notified of the problem by the nation's first man in the space, astronaut Alan B. Shepard. Conrad and Gordon had no immediate comment. The leak, located in the rocket's oxidizer tank, was discovered by a technician after the big Titan was loaded with fuel for the scheduled 10.25 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time liftoff. At the moment, the fuel in the leaking tank is being unloaded, and later this morning, engineers hope to determine just how serious the problem is. Officials say the postponement will be at least one day, but most likely longer. If the leak can be patched from the outside, the Gemini 11 mission could be rescheduled this weekend. Otherwise, if a technician has to go inside the tank to repair the uh, leak, the Gemini 11 could be grounded for a week. Astronauts Conrad and Gordon were to have blasted off one hour and 37 minutes after the Agena target satellite roared into orbit at 8.48 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. 
The astronauts would have been looking for man's shortest rendezvous by catching the Agena target in their first orbit over Hawaii. The mission plans will remain the same when the leak in the Titan II rocket has been repaired. J. Barbary, NBC News, Cape Kennedy. Direct from our space center at Cape Kennedy, in color, this is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. And from our newsroom in New York, Roger Mudd. Good evening. A pinhole, a sniffer, and some water glass. These were the ingredients which provided an anxious day here at Cape Kennedy. The pinhole came first. It developed uh, during the night in the main oxidizer tank of the big Titan rocket back there on pad 19, which was to have boosted Gemini 11 into space this morning. It was a sniffer, a small mechanical box-like device used to uh, trace escaping gas that discovered the trouble. At first, it was thought that the trouble might be serious enough to postpone this flight as much as a week. Smoothly. The astronauts are in their spacecraft atop their Titan II booster, and they are listening as we are to see if there are any further complications will develop. <clears throat> None so far. The Atlas Agena is moving toward a liftoff a minute and a half from now. Everything is proceeding satisfactorily. The weather at Cape Kennedy is good. Few broken clouds. The rain that uh, Cape Kennedy experienced overnight has disappeared. The weather forecasters work correct. It's a clear day. It's a good day for a launch, and we are now a minute and 15 seconds away from the scheduled blast off of the Agena. Now, Jay Barbary is in an excellent position to give us a report on uh, how it is on pad 14. Jay, come on in. Well, Bob, here at the moment, as always, thousands of people have moved out of the buildings here on Cape Kennedy. They're out to watch the launching take place. This is the third attempt, and hopefully the lucky one today. The seal has been... Uh, the hatch has been sealed properly on pad 19 uh, on the Gemini 11 spacecraft. And now the pressurization inside the big, tall Gemini, or Atlas Agena rocket, brother, is taking place. The liquid oxygen vent valves are being closed. The pressure is building up. And we are now just 33 seconds away from the moment of launch. We're going to be getting the final moments of the countdown from Jack King and Gemini Launch Control, who has all of the instruments on the countdown coming into his position. So for the final countdown, we switch to Jack King. T minus 18 seconds and counting. We have the sequencer in, T minus 15. All still looking good, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. And we have a liftoff. The Atlas Agena rocket rises off its pad here. It has a big spout of fiery flame coming out of the bottom. It's a smooth liftoff. And the big question here this morning is whether or not this autopilot is, will indeed work as it should. And it appears to be now as the Atlas Agena rocket by the bright sun shining through a big hole in the clouds as it continues to climb straight up. It's a beautiful launch, everything going true and smooth at this moment. The Atlas Agena is on its way into an orbit 185 miles above the Earth where the Agena target satellite should be orbited to become the rendezvous target for Gemini 11. Astronauts Charles Conrad and Richard Gordon are watching the liftoff or listening to it, we should say, in their Gemini 11 spacecraft on pad 19. The Atlas Agena has passed through the thin king in Gemini launch control. 15 seconds and coming. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Two big rocket motors in the first stage of the Titan II have ignited, and astronauts Charles Pete Conrad and Richard Gordon are on their way into space. The liftoff is clean and beautiful, as the silver rocket is covered with white and black stripes. Near its center, it's climbing into this partly cloudy Florida sky. The rocket's roar is uh, at its peak now, and the sound is uh, being swept across our NBC observation balcony by a breeze from the ocean. Let's listen to it. The Titan II's 
big rocket motors are spouting 430,000 pounds of thrust as it pushes astronauts Charles P. Conrad and Richard Gordon toward their rendezvous with the target rocket. Apparently, they got off right on schedule in that two-second window. We have already lost sight of the Gemini Titan II rocket as uh, it cl climbed through the thin clouds here over the Cape. We are getting uh, reports from Jack Riley in Mission Control in Houston. Let's switch to him. Approaching six miles altitude, four miles downrange. We're listening to Jack Riley coming in from the Mission Control Let's Center. Start time, 42 minutes, 27 seconds after the hour. And we just might, in here in a few seconds, get the voices of the astronauts. Uh, if the voices are coming in clean, you will hear them come in in the background. And of course, we're listening to it. There they are. You're hearing the transmission from the space DPS. Guidance update has just gone up to the spacecraft. Doing minor jobs. So, one of the key objectives in this, the last of the Gemini missions, is to learn more about man's ability to work on his own outside the spacecraft. Astronaut Edwin Buzz Aldrin will be the man who does the excursions in space during this mission. So, space officials are looking for these two main things during the spacewalks. Uh, if frequent rest periods will make it easier to do the job, and if Aldrin's chest-packed life support system uh, can uh, play a large part in making the job uh, easier. Well, we're now uh, still in the hold period, uh, T minus three, and holding. This was a built-in hold. We'll repeat that nothing unusual is happening. They're going through the last-minute checks. Let's switch now to uh, Jay Barbary again. We're just at this moment ready to pick up the uh, countdown here at Cape Kennedy. We are now two minutes and 50 seconds and counting, Robert. And all is ready here on launch pad 19 as astronauts James Lovell and Edwin Aldrin wait inside their spacecraft on top of the 11-story Titan II rocket. Uh, the uh, Gina target is now over the Gulf of Mexico. It's moving through space at five miles per second. And when it moves over the state of Florida, the Titan II rocket will be triggered to begin the last rendezvous flight in this Gemini program. The countdown now is two minutes and 23 seconds and still counting. Continue to monitor at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have ignition. Titan II rocket has been triggered, and astronauts James Lovell and Edwin Alden are on their way into space to conclude the Gemini project in the next four days. The liftoff was clean and beautiful as the silver rocket climbs into the Florida sky. Command pilot Lovell, the space flight champion, in time spent in orbit, is scanning the Gemini 12 instruments and reporting their readings to the Mission Control Center in Houston. As you can hear, the rocket's roar is at its peak as the sound is swept across our from the Atlantic Ocean. We might add that our microphone is not capable of picking up the fullness of this rocket's teeth shattering roar, but we'll listen for a moment. The Titan II rocket's two big motors are spotting 430,000 pounds of thrust to push astronauts Lovell and Aldrin toward their rendezvous with the Agena target. If orbit successfully, the astronauts hope to catch the Agena three orbits from now over the southern, uh, over the southern Atlantic Ocean, approaching the western, uh, the eastern coast of Africa. The Gemini 12 rocket is beginning to tilt over in, in its flight path over the ocean. It appears to be rising on a transparent column of heat. The rocket that uses fuel which does not burn bright flame. Uh, instead of the usual fire we're generally used to watching here, we are now losing sight of it. But in Houston, Texas, at the Mission Control Center, Terry White is there. He has all the maps and charts necessary to watch these men go into orbit. We switch now for his continuous commentary. Five, one, one, forty. We are now receiving the live voices of the astronauts from the Gemini 12 spacecraft. Roger. Uh, 
Mike Dynamics says all data looks good on the Gemini 12 launch. Mission control is go for staging. Roger, you're go for staging on the ground. Staging will occur at 2 plus 36. listening to transmissions from the spacecraft. Initial steering on the uh, second stage of the Gemini launch vehicle looks good. Perfect staging. <laughs> 